The first Ascendants hotfix is here, guys, and we're going to go over it. One of the coolest things I love about their hotfixes is that we get some little bit of information regarding of what the director says when they do certain updated. So let's go ahead and get started with the most important ones, which is the content improvement for the UI and the UX. Now, this is a big problem if you're ever playing with a Glee or a Glee. Uh, they are super really effective, but when they start shooting their projectiles, you can't see Jack. So this is the first thing they approved. They said an option has been added to turn off players effect projectile explosion. In order to improve the visibility of the explosion effect and the duration of the vestigial organ have been reduced. As, uh, so the director says, as Lee Infinite launcher build became popular, we took temporarily measures to address an issue where the explosion effects was disturbing gameplay severely. Currently, we only provide the option to disable other players projectile explosion effects but we are planning to enhance this feature for all for other effects as well. Awesome. So now they also went ahead and added a system message has been added to make it easier to check the DBNO status of allies. And an extra measure has been added to the party member UI to reduce the research complication visual effect duration of four material frequently used in research away from the keyboard AFK has been added as well. And this is what the director says. We have been keeping a close eye on recent trends regarding AFK, and we agree that AFK hinders gameplay for all other players. So what they did is they went ahead and added an option for you to be able to report someone that is AFK, and the AFK kick system can be exploited for other purposes. First, we're trying to learn the pattern of the AFK player with the reports, and then they plan to collect the information necessary to separate the AFK players in the matchmaking and prepare an appropriate measure in the future. We're considering ways to resolve the AFK issue so that everyone can enjoy the game together and they ask to respect the players. So basically they fixed the DBNN status and they went ahead and added a measure for the party UI to be able to see that and they added an option for the AFK. The other things they went ahead and added was they added a uh, they updated so the major rewards obtained from the quests that have been already cleared are checked in the quest list. They also added a function that to add it to view the acquisition information directory in the target section of the library, which is awesome. So there's really good improvements. They fixed an issue for scrolling to the top when moving from the target items to the other library to the corresponding item list. This is awesome as well. And added a firearm type and round type to the library list of weapons cool okay so they want to also fix an issue where players joined the void fusion reactors could use the reconstructed device even if there were no void shards after completing the mission huh when completing the void fragment mission obtain two types of void shards the amount obtained has been increased so they increase the amount of void shards we get from completing the void fragment missions which are awesome void fusion reactor missions tooltips have been updated to display the number of void shards added a linked amorph uh, amorphous material to void fusion reactor missions tooltip and void shards attributes will now display on the map directly so this is what they say we discovered and fixed an issue where the party members abort mission system was being exploited to repeatedly play the void fusion reactor reactor without consuming any shards so this is a very crazy crazy uh thing that we didn't know about that you were able to abort the mission and keep farming those void fusion reactors while addressing this glitch we are also considering why players might resort to using it we realized that the transition from shard farming to actual void fusion reactor missions was quite inconvenient and tedious therefore we not only fixed the bug but also increased the amount of void charge obtained and improved the farming process to make it more convenient i love these devs please wait a little longer as we significantly improve the fragment farming routes in the upcoming week five update schedule for august the first so we already know we're getting a brand new update on August the 1st. We are excited. The team, the dev team will continue to learn and grow from the player's experience and we're listening to your feedback. Guys, listen, we got to take advantage that the devs are actually listening, are actually putting in the work. We, there's games that the devs don't give a kahoot. I'm actually glad that they are actually did this. So they also did another thing, which they increased the number of attached items that can be registered has been updated from a thousand each for weapon reactors and external components. So for the descendants, this is what they went ahead and fixed: thrill bomb and lightning emission, 
with Ultimate Bunny's high voltage module will now target nearby targets rather than random targets. All right, so high voltage now has become even better. Allergy of the res uh, res reconstruction serum of UN now applies to the Colossus as well. Ultimate Bunny's electric charge, high voltage, and Bunny electric condense sound effects have now been changed. Use Bunny's skill, oh, sorry, use Bunny's skin. No, hold on. Use Bunny's skill to inflict electroconduction on enemies has been removed from the second and third stage evolution condu conditions of the Bunny evolving skin. Speedy awakening one. So I guess you don't no longer have to do those skills in order to get the evolve the evolution from that skin i don't know if you guys know but there is a bunny skin that evolves as you get kilts really really cool she's the only one that has one i'll probably make a separate video on that it is 40 bucks though man oof okay then we have infiltration operation you can now view missions resulting uh results through the escape menu after completing an infiltration operation Awesome, because there was no way to view that. The time limit for destroying the Iron Heart has been removed in the infiltration operation in Fortress, Heart of the Fortress. The location of the supply drone in the infiltration operation has a uh, uh, fortress. Quarterstone has been moved to the battle zone, making it easier to, uh, to supply bullets. Now, for missions, this is what they did. The positioning of Im uh, immunity spheres of named monsters will now change will not change anymore as the monster moves the rotation okay cool so that's when they they spawn those uh those those ugly looking spheres the sequential sphere type of the name immunity of the altered hand of nasa's nasa straw I, I don't know if i said that correctly that appears in the white knight gulch eye of the truth has been updated so for the field they updated the drop quantity of hard difficulty has now been increased to approximately 1.5 so now you will be getting more bullets and more items from the drops when playing hard mode uh for miscellaneous they added the stack limit for consumable items has been increased from 1 million to 100 uh, million and they updated some uh, of the icons this is what the director had to say about this the first descendants have been deployed uh developed with deep affections and respect for various loot and shooters and we take feedback regarding other similar games very seriously through this aspect we're trying to reflect the unique identity of the first descendants we will continue to improve the game as we move along for optimized improvements, they fixed memory leaks uh, from uh, the window mode, from the frame generation. They also fixed temporary frame drops that were happening when you had DLSS, and they fixed issues when you had DLSS and FSR enabled. As far as bug fixes are concerned, they fixed stuff for Russia, Spanish, and Portuguese that were having problems within the menu. Uh, they also fixed an issue where the menu uh, remained when scrolling up on the map. They fixed an issue where the black screen would really disappear on special operations. And they also fixed a, fixed a simple effects that have been added with code and analyzers. Now, for the Descendants, they fixed a couple issues with the Descendants, which are after completing the exclusive dungeon of the quest to Bunny or Beloved Daughter in the Bunny quest, they fixed an issue where Bunny's lightning emission was used, even if there was no moving distance when rolling over the box on the wall. We love how Bunny runs fast, unleashes electric energy, and takes down her enemies. Bunny is a descendant who gains her power in, pur in proportion in the distance she travels. However, rolling around in the corner and using her skin the skills was not what we expect from her, so we decided to fix this. Additionally, we are we are detecting the no, well, additionally we are detecting the use of various macros and unauthorized programs to other monitoring systems including the rolling in place macro we are currently taking action against macros and unauthorized programs and we will continue to try to create a more enjoyable game uh environment for everyone yes guys players on pc yeah sometimes you see build and you're like man why are they doing so good a lot of macro playing happening right there guys Fix an issue where sound effects was not uh was not played initially when landing on the floor with kyle and they fix an issue where the charge motion was repeated with Kyle's propulsion dash. Now, this is a really cool one, guys. The modules, we got a couple modules that got fixed here. Fix an issue with arch acceleration module did not increase the speed and distance for projectiles. So this is going to be really important for a couple of you guys that are running a couple of players that are shooting projectiles. They also fixed an issue with Ajax, the body enhancement module, did not reflect the max shield in the current shield after moving the map. 
They also fixed an issue where the fire attack of shoot focus uh, module was applied as a sum operation and not as a multi multiplicative, the multiplicative operation. They fixed an issue where the module list scroll was reset to the top after module enhancements. This was an issue that I was having as well. Now, as far as missions are concerned, uh, they fixed a couple spawn points where monsters weren't spawning. Uh, they fixed a couple issues where the quest would, would only start under certain circumstances. They fixed an issue where the spheres would tremble when they were too far from the monsters. And they fi uh, fixed an issue in the upper hatchery mission in the White Gulch that prevented the field to be changed. They fixed an issue where monsters would spawn even without the actual battle within the White Knight Gulch Fortress outskirts. Now, the director comment, this is what he's saying. The fortress outskirts have become popular farming area with many monsters pouring in from the uh, beginning of the launch. We love the run and kill play and being run, shooting and bursting are fundamental aspects of loot and shooters. So However, using the, the terrain to exploit and gather monsters without any action was not what we intend. Everybody has simply stood still and hunted the game enjoy enjoyment while quickly diminishing. Therefore, we decided to make a change. We maintain the spawn rate to, uh, by keeping the four Volks resource stores active simultaneously, but monsters will not increase when players are idle. Run, shoot, and create more explosions. May many more monsters will continue to appear. So basically, a lot of people were explaining this, just chilling on the on the uh, you know kind of like on the mountaintop, waiting for a bunch of monsters to accumulate, and then they would go and kill them, and they went ahead and fixed it. They also fixed an issue where the code analyzer was terminally required when working with encrypted vaults in hard difficulty. That has been fixed. They fixed void interceptor battle issue where the remove uh, where the removal did not happen intermittently and grapple hook was immediately during the battle. Now miscellaneous fixed issues where the items were not collected when purchasing multiple items of the same product. So the director, this is the final closing that he says, thank you, uh, thanks to the love and interest you have shown for us. We feel uh, uh, brimly, uh, briming energy of the community. Hotfix 2.5 includes many fixes, which we hope will improve the game experience. Recently, we saw a video in the community where the Colossus was defeated more quickly through module switching. If, if we have a bit more time, we would uh, have liked to include a fix for this in Hotfix 1.3, but unfortunately, we did not make it into the update. The dev team does not want module switching to become any another strategy. This met method makes combat tedious and does not fit well with the run and gun playstyle. The dev team wants skills, weapon modules, and external components to be part of the strategy. We hope that in depth build research will progress, but strategies requiring inconvenient controls are not what the development team wants so far. So, for those of you content creators posting those one-shot builds where the menus are being switched, that's task, task, task. Last but not least, we are planning to skip the patch next week for the upcoming fifth week update on August the 1st. Please look forward for the new descendant, uh, for the new descendant Luna and ultimate Bobby, uh, new interceptor battles, new ultimate weapons, modules, and external components and skills on August the 1st. Let's go! Let's go! We got the confirmation that Luna's coming, ultimate Bunny's coming, new weapons, new modules, everything. Let's go. I'm happy. I'm excited. Let's make it happen. Let's do it. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Make sure you guys keep it locked, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.